lift off of Tim Coper, Yuri Malenchenko, and Timothy Peake on their way to the International Space Station. A Russian space capsule carrying three astronauts from the United States, Britain, and Russia blasted off this morning for the International Space Station. NASA has much bigger ambitions. The agency is planning a human mission to Mars for the 2030s. It's already recruiting Americans who may take the journey. And Jan Crawford is at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington with the Out of This World plan. Jan, good morning. <laughs> Well, good morning. So we're inside a model of the Discovery Shuttle where tourists can kind of get a feel for what it's like to be an astronaut. And if they like it, they may be able to apply. Starting this week, NASA is opening up the application process for the next generation of space travel. Going to Mars and the human journey to Mars, I think absolutely is a, a renaissance. I think we've captivated not just U.S., but the world. The Martian astronauts. It seems kind of crazy that that's really going to happen. It's very real. NASA Deputy Administrator David Newman hopes a record-breaking number of qualified Americans apply to NASA's astronaut class of 2017. What does it take to be a good astronaut? The background is really important. How are people as leaders? How are they in team? We have a really rigorous selection board. Applicants must be a U.S. citizen with a bachelor's degree in engineering, biological, or physical science or mathematics. They also should have three years of relevant experience, or at least 1,000 hours piloting a jet. And the physical is another hurdle. Is it a combination of, like, highly intellectual, but also intensely physical? And also operational. And how do, how do you make decisions? How do you work in teams? Because you're making critical decisions, and in human spaceflight, you're making life and death decisions. There have been 338 NASA astronauts, ranging in age from 26 to 46. Of the 6,300 who applied for the last class, only eight, four men and four women, were chosen. That's about a 0.1% chance. Aerobatic pilot and NASA applicant Melissa Pemberton isn't discouraged. For a pilot and someone that has a passion for travel and adventure and aviation, I just can't even imagine a, a better job than being an astronaut. Candidates will spend at least one year training for spacewalks, operating robotics, and undergoing mission simulations, all with a possibility of one day going to Mars. Take us about eight months to, to get there, and it's round trip, so just under a couple years round trip. And we'll be on the surface of Mars for about 500 days searching for the evidence of, of life, of past life. They're going to be together in that environment for almost four years going to Mars and back. It takes an extraordinary person. So while space is a curiosity for many, the NASA job is obviously not a good fit for everyone. You've got to have a pretty good resume. There's people with a lot of experience and all the right academic background. That's who typically make it. But it is a very fine filter. It's, it's kind of an audacious undertaking. It's an audacious thing. But then you talk to any astronauts and they'll say, hey, we're just normal people. People are so humble and grounded and, and say, you can do it. Dream. And that's a really important message. Now, Numa says a lot of the applicants grew up dreaming about being an astronaut. I mean, they got advanced degrees, they flew jets in the military, all to wear one of these. If you think you've got the right stuff, NASA is taking applications till February 18th. Gail? Thanks, Jan. I wonder how many applications I'll get this time. 6,300, only do you, eight. Do you want me to write you a recommendation, Gail? <laughs> yeah. I'd be happy yes, to do that's it. That's G-A-Y-L-E. Must be your <laughs> other friend named Gail. Definitely not this one. Thank you, Jan. You mean Charlie, C-H-A-R-L-I-E. Jan, thank you again.